here gathered in the church on this beautiful Sunday morning. And good morning to all of those who might be watching us electronically uh, in the future. Uh, it's good to be together. We have some people that are at Mount Horn Herman this weekend. Uh, we trust that they're having a great time doing some of the same things that we're doing here this morning. We're glad to have our worship band. Uh, they can get along with some people gone because we have enough people that have wonderful <laughs> musical gifts that uh, if we had them all here on one Sunday, they wouldn't be ready for, wouldn't be room for the congregation. <laughs> so uh, we will begin by singing one of my favorite worship songs, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. Stand as you can. <clears throat>
Anyway, they're, they're following the same in the face of the Lord. My first moment is that we finally got women through nursing school. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's, it's more than that, it's a great moment. Um, the ceremony was sort of, um, it wasn't sanctioned by the school because they told the kids they could walk in March or December, so we kind of did it on our own. And so it wasn't really formal, and Lauren being Lauren became sort of the MC. <laughs> And um, after they got their things, apparently one of the students is very religious. And there was, she asked for an impromptu prayer for the, for the students. And I was like, oh my god, it worked. <laughs> she was <listening>, don't <laughs> See? Um, but anyway, I just wanted to say, you know, it was awesome to, to witness that. Um, it was great to get her through school. But, to also witness that um, all of them were willing to take God on their journey. So, and thanks for one of the best friends in the whole wide world that went and helped. <laughs> <laughs>
first lesson is from Jeremiah, um, chapter 15, verses 15 through 21. O oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O oh Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Second reading is from Romans, chapter 12, verse 9 to 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Now, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will keep burning coals in their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of Matthew, beginning at the 21st verse. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels and the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what he has done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Uh, 
I wasn't going to preach on that last verse where Jesus says some of you will still be alive when the kingdom comes. That takes a little interpreting. Let me give you just a brief bit of interpretation on that. The kingdom did come while Jesus was still alive. That was a foretaste of the kingdom coming when Jesus was healing and uh, when Jesus was really turning the world around with his new version of love. Uh, people began to see a new kind, a new way of God ruling in his kingdom on this earth through Jesus' ministry already long before the final coming of the kingdom. Well, there are several themes in this gospel from Matthew, but I want to narrow it down and think about the different kinds of crosses. My text is Matthew 16, beginning at verse 24. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? People were following Jesus in droves at the beginning of his ministry. He was the popular preacher of the day. He was making the headlines. He was touching people's hearts. Crowds wanted to hear him speak. But Jesus had not come into the world just to be a popular preacher. He had come into the world to bring people into a closer relationship with God, to recruit people to give their lives to God and become part of a community of people who trusted in God's love and lived as God's people. Jesus called for radical surrender of self to God. And he put it in those words. If you want me to be your savior, that means you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. We're having a communion today. We come forward in faith, trusting in Christ as our savior, who gives himself to us in the bread and the wine, and offers us forgiveness of sin and eternal life. That's the first half of it. That's what Jesus does for us. The second half is our part. Our part is denying ourselves, taking up our cross, and following Jesus out the doors of the church and into everyday life. When we talk about taking up a cross, we're not talking about the kind of cross that some people carry during the season of Lent. Did you hear about that preacher in Ohio some years ago who actually carried a big wooden cross 70 miles on Good Friday? Real cross carrying is to carry a cross of service and maybe suffering doing some worthwhile purpose. Something Christ has laid on your heart for you to do. Real crosses are not just suffering for suffering's sake, but for the sake of really helping somebody. Now the cross that Jesus carried on Good Friday involved the most horrible suffering imaginable. But it was suffering for a purpose. Jesus suffered to show his great love and in order to pay the debt of all the sin, of all the people, of all the world, for all time. I want to repeat that. Jesus suffered on the cross to pay the debt of all the sin, of all the people, of all the world, of all time. You are probably carrying some crosses today. And the people in the pews around you are probably carrying some crosses as well. Somebody's cross might be the responsibility of getting the family up 
and ready to go to church on Sunday morning. In most families, even if there are only two in the family, there's one person that assumes that responsibility of getting up and getting to church. You're the one who sets the alarm, maybe puts the coffee on, or gets the clothes and shoes ready for the kids. That's an important cross to bear. Actually, I believe Christ gives every Christian the cross of denying yourself and taking up the cross of getting to worship on Sunday. You have to deny yourself to take up that cross of getting to church on Sunday. You may, ha may have to deny, deny yourself staying up late on Saturday night if you're going to make it getting up on Sunday morning. You may have to deny yourself watching a football game on Saturday afternoon, so you go out and cut the grass on Saturday instead of waiting to cut it on Sunday morning. Well, denying yourself to get to church on Sunday is a little different for everybody, but it still takes some self-denial. The church council members here at Grace do a lot of self-denial to do the work of planning and organizing, preparing reports, going to meetings, making contacts, <laughs> making phone calls, sending texts. A lot of work being a church leader, a lot of self-denial for the sake of Christ. Our musicians do a lot of planning and rehearsing to make our music beautiful and meaningful and worshipful. It's their way of denying themselves, taking up their cross, and following Jesus, doing the work he has gifted them to do and called them to do. You never know when Jesus may lay a cross of service down in front of you and say, pick it up. It's my call to you. It's what I'm calling you to do. Some of you knew my best friend, Steve Blair, when he was a firefighter at Hunter Liggett and worshiped here at Grace. Well, when Steve was at home on Sundays, he worshiped at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church where I was his pastor. We were also good friends already when he was younger and we were hunting buddies. See, Steve sometimes helped in youth ministry. I remember one time, uh, he drove, and I drove, and we carried a bunch of kids down to L.A. to, to a youth rally down there, and he really got to know these young high school boys and was a good minister to them. And maybe that, that has something to do with God calling Steve into the ordained, ordained ministry. Now, Steve had a good career going as a firefighter. He was already a captain at a young age. He was a paramedic. It looked to the casual observer as if Steve had it made vocationally. But Steve looked at it differently. Jesus had called him to a new vocation. And life for Steve was his relationship to Christ. To disobey Christ was unthinkable. For what does it profit to gain the whole world and forfeit your life? So Steve took up the cross of giving up his comfortable lifestyle and he began living the frugal life of putting himself through college and seminary in order to become a pastor. Along the way, God blessed him with a good wife, Carrie. Steve eventually was ordained and served in Hanford, a good long ministry and is recently retired. Makes me really feel old when <laughs> my young friend Steve is retired from ministry. But Steve has been a blessing to many because he took up his cross, which was his, his Lord's calling into the ministry. I, ha I have in my file the story of Buddy Post who some years ago won $16 million in the Pennsylvania lottery. 
Everybody's dream, right? <laughs> but Buddy Post Millions didn't bring him happiness. Instead, a lot of people that he thought were his friends got him into some bad investments and he went bankrupt. And decided that he would, he would take all of his installments still to come for those winnings to pay off his debts. I think Buddy would agree to the truth of Jesus' words. What is a profit to gain the whole world? It can't give you real life. And then right behind, below that article about Buddy Post's misfortune with his millions was a story of Mother Teresa. What a contrast. Mother Teresa lived in voluntary poverty all her life. After taking up the cross of serving the sick and the dying, Mother Teresa has gone on to her reward. A Presbyterian minister in Tennessee, Bob Hodges, got a lot of stories in this one, tells about a duck hunting trip with his friend Riley, who had just recently given his life to Christ. And Roddy said it, and his old friends seemed to delight in trying to get him to go back into his old ways. And they ridiculed him for spending so much time now with his preacher. And so Roddy says to his preacher, friend, why is it, why is it that I'm having more trouble since I became a Christian than I ever had when I was lost? I just spoke up. I'll tell you, right. I'll tell you why. A couple ducks fly over you. And you shoot. You kill one, and you wound the other, and they both fall into the lake. Which one do you try to retrieve first? That's easy, easy Riley drawled. I go after the injured one first. The dead one ain't going nowhere. I just said, and that's the way it is with the devil. He goes after the injured Christian. He's not going to bother with the man dead in sin. But the minute you give your life to Christ, you better get ready. The devil is going to come after you. Another kind of suffering is the cross. The cross, another kind of cross is the cross of suffering. Now, we don't believe that God sends all suffering to us. But we do believe that God can work some good out of all suffering. God is with us in our suffering, and we bear it with the help of Christ. St. Paul in encourages us in the lesson today from Romans as was shared, be patient in suffering. Be patient in suffering and persevere in prayer. Steve Blair had a big bump in the road while he was at Luther Seminary. He suffered a serious stroke and a long road to eventual 90-some percent recovery. But I think he probably was a better pastor when he visited the sick in his parish after having suffered his stroke. You must not be too quick to say that all suffering is just meaningless. Another hero from our recent past is Corey Tenboom. Many of you probably read her book, The Hiding Place. And she tells how they were transferred to a new, a new a concentration camp called Ravensbrück. She and her sister were. And of course, their only crimes were hiding Jews from the Nazis in World War II. And that first day in this new camp, their scripture was from 1 Thessalonians, reminding them to give thanks in all circumstances. So Bessie told her sister Corey, 
Now thank God for every detail of these new living quarters. At first, Corey refused to, to thank God for the fleas. But eventually, she gave in and did. Because as time went by, they realized they had more freedom to hold Bible study and prayer meetings in Ravensbrook than they had where they had been before. They finally realized that they could indeed thank God for the fleas. For it was the fleas that kept the guards out of their barracks. Sometimes the cross of suffering turns out to be a blessing in disguise. So may we always hold the cross high as we do in that one hymn, Lift High the Cross. It's the symbol of our Lord's giving his life for us. And may we respond to his invitation when he says, if you want to be my followers, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. And may we be ready to pick up any cross that the Lord lays in our path. If the Lord gives you a cross, it's worth carrying. It leads to life, and it may be a blessing in disguise. Amen. Right, the musicians come up and lead us in a song and we share our offer. Crucified, 
died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank and praise you for carrying your cross to Calvary and giving your life for us on that cross. Help us to pick up the crosses you place before us, especially the crosses of servanthood and suffering. We pray for all who are going through the devastation of wildfires in Hawaii. Give the gift of hope to those who have lost their homes or their businesses. Be especially with those who lost loved ones. We pray your strength for the people of Florida and Georgia and South Carolina who live through the horror of Hurricane Idalia. We thank you that there was precious little loss of life. We pray for all who are working to restore power and clean up and begin rebuilding. We thank you for our members who are at Mount Hermon this weekend and we pray that they will be growing in faith and love through that time away in that beautiful location. Dear God, we pray for all who need your healing help. For Karen Saratelli, Brian Bessemer, Chuck Krauss, Randy Hendley, Rita Tabernetti, Holly Thompson, Emily Black in the hospital in Southern California awaiting the delivery of her twin sons. We pray that they can be born healthy and strong. And Lord, we lift the names of others in our minds and our hearts who need your healing touch and pray for each one. We pray, pray for Connie Bauer, who has just discovered that she has a cancer battle to fight. Please give her, keep bringing your thoughts and prayers. Mm -hmm. We thank you for all who serve in the armed forces and especially those who serve far away from home, far from their loved ones. We pray comfort for all who grieve the death of loved ones. We pray for the family of Ed and Mary Balangie as they are planning Ed's funeral so soon after the service for Mary. We pray comfort for David and all the family of Janice Phillips in their grief. And we thank you for confident hope in the resurrection and eternal life through our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Now, God, into your hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your love and mercy and trusting that you hear and answer our prayers. And now we prepare our hearts for Holy Communion by confessing our sins and hearing the promise of forgiveness. See, maybe you don't have that there. Um, yeah. Uh, because we used to have it in another part of the service. Oh. We have it. Yes, we do have it. Okay. The, I will, I will pray the first paragraph and then you will join in. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people. Turn us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us of our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ.
Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, remember me. The Lord's table is ready. Please come forward, starting on this side.
by and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. <clears throat> Now we pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's time for the announcements. So, Women of Grace will have our meeting tomorrow night at the home of Colette Bumalo at 7 o'clock. We invite you to join us for a time of fellowship and planning for our coming events. Uh, our food pantry is still collecting cereal, as you can see, and we'd appreciate every little bit you give us. I think we we'll gave you the count yesterday, and we need about 38 more boxes to be able to give everyone a box of cereal uh, next Friday, so, or Friday after, whenever we get to that um, goal. Also, the food pantry was planning to have a food drive, uh, a, a goodwill drive, um, the weekend of October 7th and 8th. However, uh, with the news of Connie's illness, Peggy has asked to go out of that, to postpone it for a while till we um, get Pop Connie through this difficult time of her life. So save your stuff. If you have stuff you just have to get out of your home, we do have storage. Uh, <laughs> so uh, minimal storage, not a whole lot, but if you have bags of things, we can store them. Just let us know, or John, Johnny Peck, I'm not here, can help you with that. You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> Sorry, that. Yeah. And my final um, announcement is about this backpack. This is a renegade backpack. For some reason, it didn't make it up here for the blessing. It didn't make it to Selena's, so I'm going to deliver it to the lady um, that collects these backpacks, but it didn't get blessed. So I'm going to say a prayer over the renegade backpack. <laughs> Please, dear Lord. Please bless the child that receives this backpack. Help him to be strong in his new situation, in his new school, and to understand that there are many who care about him and we want him to succeed. Him or her. Thank you, O Lord. For Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I think it's wonderful that at Grace, you don't call upon the pastor to do every blessing. <laughs> thank you Edith, for doing that blessing in the same way that we thank God for the members of the congregation who can stand up here in the pulpit and preach the word of God as well we are blessed with a lot of wonderful gifted people in our congregation now please rise for the benediction and I will do this one <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our closing song.